wanted to be up here with you doing this right now. Thank you so much. Thank you, brother. Um, to the ATL, everybody in Atlanta, thank you guys for having us here. And as far as the way that we did it, you know, I think one of the best slogans that have ever been created from one of the biggest companies around the world was Nike when they said, just do it. Yes. Okay? When there's no uh, overthinking, it's more like thinking ahead. Yes. Envisioned it. Uh, and around five, six years old, due to certain circumstances, the way I was growing up, moving around a whole lot, in a city that was growing, which is Miami, Florida. And it's a city that went from being uh, some Miamians out there. Yeah, well, one time for the 305 out there too. And it's a city where it went from the cocaine capital to one of the meccas of the world right now. We got a chance to see all that growth. And around five or six, like I said before, I figured out that I wanted a couple things in my life, which was stability, security, and protection. Mm. The first thing that came into my life like that, obviously, would be my mother. You know, I owe, I owe my mother everything. She's my superhero, and a woman made me a man. I always say it is the truth. And in our family, we have a lot of revolutionary blood, so we like to go against the grain, and we like to go against the system, and we like to create better ways on how we feel it should be, you know, which is actually better for everybody. <clears throat> So growing up like that, I watched a lot of entrepreneurs growing up involved with other extracurricular activities. <laughs> <laughs> it's a creative way to describe yeah, it. Yeah, 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 you know, I, I don't like to throw anybody under the bus. Yes. But I love all they, uh, they learned how to multiply. Some of them got their hands on what they wanted and didn't understand the opportunity they had. Others took it and found a way to grow it so that they can get out of that way of living, let's just say. Yeah. So my first, my first escape was basketball. And if you uh, <laughs> believe me, I was always the outcast in any basketball team I played on. <laughs> okay. But I learned something from playing ball, which was the harder you work, the better you get. Discipline, teamwork, punctuality, and. You know, I run around now and sometimes they call me Chico. They say, Chico, you so lucky, Chico. I say, yeah, it's funny because the harder I work, the luckier I get. Okay. Opportunity seems to arise. Yeah, that's right. And basketball set me up for the music business. Because mm. in the music business, if you ask me, and I say this in, in one of my albums, I say, I'm involved in the music business, but half of these folks don't know music and don't know business, have no business in music. What is this? Yeah. And it's just the truth. So imagine if I'm dealing with a bunch of people that are telling me the kind of music I need to put out, the kind of things I need to do, the kind of movement I need to be a part of, uh, or even trying to categorize me as an artist, well, it took the discipline from basketball, the fighter, mm. understanding teamwork, understanding what it is to involve yourself with people that are aligned with the same vision and apply it to the music business. Now, if the music business would have been as sharp as they should have been in the late 90s, they wouldn't have sued Napster. They would have bought Napster. In the late 90s, they wouldn't have told Steve Jobs, oh no, we don't want to do a deal with uh, iTunes. They would have got a piece of iTunes. They would have found a way to partner up. And in turn, they would have been a part of the iPhone, iPad, I everything at this point. Correct? So I learned from what they, what, what they were doing. Bottom line is, failure has been the mother of all success with everything that I've been been involved with. And I seen a line the other day that I thought was great where they say, you don't make mistakes, mistakes make you. Mm -hmm. That's, That's been my life. That's you all learn, I've done. You learn from them what you have. You have to learn from them. Yeah. And I've, I've learned from the worst, but listen to the best. Figure out that riddle and figure out success. And that's why I'm on stage right now with Tony. Give <laughs> <laughs> my hands. Life is not been without pain and not been without problems. You know, people see that some of us are so successful as you are, and I miss that. Tell us about, if you would, some of those darker days early on, and how'd you get through it? Because everyone has dark days, but not everybody finds their way through it. How'd you do it? Well, at first, I didn't really understand the life that I was living. But I mean, man, I thought it was just everybody's normal. As you start to grow, you look back and you go, 
wow, wait a second, I was going through things at five, six years old that I shouldn't have been going through. But I thank God for that, and, and I thank God for those experiences because it wouldn't have built the character to be able to be on the stage and have this conversation. Yes. So things such as, I grew up around, and this isn't nothing about being a victim, it's just me being real with y'all, and hopefully you guys take it, motivate, motivate yourself, inspire yourself, and I'm hoping one way or another it helps you with whatever path and journey you guys are trying to create. But I grew up around drugs, I grew up around abuse, I grew up around a, alcoholism, drug addiction, I mean, you name it, pimps, everything was around. But I didn't understand it, I just thought, oh, okay, that's Joseito, that's Miguelito, that's Armandito, that's just our normal. But it started to shape me. And when I mean abuse, I, didn't, I don't mean I was abused, everybody in my family was abused. So you have to. Abuse is a very interesting thing. It can either make you stronger or it can make you a victim. Yeah. I, I, I think it's um, an acquired taste. There's no middle ground, there's no gray area when it comes to that. Either you become an animal or you succumb to the system or, or the abuse, let's just say. So I got a chance to read everybody in my family's different plays. So my grandmother was a revolutionist and a revolutionary and a part of, the, of, of what went on in Cuba when when Castro took over, and she was one of the first four women to fight with Castro in something called La Sierra Maestra, which is when they fought in the mountains, okay? So having a grandmother that's a rebel, an aunt that is a, a political prisoner, because when they figured out what was going on, they had to, they couldn't write each other, they had to meet in certain spots, and nobody could see them talking, because if not, they knew, they knew what the play which was, the play was, which was that Castro wasn't the right play. Right. So they started, too late. Yeah, it was too late. So they started to figure out ways to get my mother and my aunt out, which was Operation Peter Pan. Operation Peter Pan was, I mean, basically a hustle through religion to get them out of Cuba into the United States of America. And that's when my mother came over here and my aunt. The reason that I tell you this story, because those are the women that built me. My grandmother, my aunt, and my mother. So when you're sitting down with someone that makes you breakfast and start, starts talking to you about, do you ask yourself these questions? Do you see where you're gonna be? Do you see what's going on? Do you see the opportunity you have in this country? Do you see how you can take advantage of this freedom that you have in this country? Do you see how you can control your own destiny without somebody coming over here and taking everything away from your family or killing everybody in your family? Basically letting me know my friend, everything we went through is to roll the red carpet out for you. And whatever you think you may be going through right now is nothing compared right. to what we went through. That's right. Come right here for that. Thank you. And that's what allowed me to see darker days. Like, what are we talking about at this point? I haven't been through, and pardon my French, I don't speak French, but I haven't been through shit compared to what my grandmother went through, my aunt went through, my mother went through, and my father went through. And all I'm doing is taking what they've taught me and applied it and taking full advantage of the fact that I can control my own destiny. You went, as you say, you made your life from a negative to a positive. Always from a negative to a positive. And, and started to, they say, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. We say in Spanish, dime con quien tu anda y de ahí o tu eres, which is, you know, tell me who you hang with, I'm gonna tell you who you are. Yeah. So I said, that'll get the word. Started to envision the circles that I wanted to be in in life, okay? And what I mean by that is, look guys, there's no hidden agenda, we're all here to generate one way or another and make money. One thing is to make money. The other thing is when you let money make you. And I know billionaires out here that have made all kinds of money and are miserable. And I'll tell you the worst prison sentence in life you can have is have all the money in the world and be miserable. Yeah. yeah. So I'm here to just talk to you guys about enjoying the journey, enjoying what it is when you do create something, and know when something, you, you don't ever want to be that person where more is never enough. You gotta have fun. Yeah. You gotta be happy. That's why I wish the Forbes list, instead of it being the wealthiest, uh, human beings in the world, it should be the happiest human beings in the world. I understand uh, a member of your family had you listen to some Tony Robbins tapes. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> when was that happening? So this is, I used to live in a, in a neighborhood in Miami called Carroll City. Carroll City is a very interesting neighborhood and still is. You know? They even tried to change the name, Miami Gardens, it's still interesting. And when I'm, when I'm growing up in this neighborhood, when my mother could take me to school, she popped in a Tony Robbins tape. Believe me, the last, I'm gonna tell you Carol City style, the last motherfucker I was trying to listen to was Tony Robbins. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I mean, I'm in the car, and there's an 82 pin total. Gotta go outside, roll the windows down, let the heat out, uh, get the, you know, the, the, the motor going. So when he's tasting, I'm trying to listen to Two Light Crew, Poison Clan, you know, NWA at the time. Matter of fact, from Atlanta, they had uh, Two High Brothers, which is a song called Do the Ground back in the day. I'm trying to listen to this. So I went to go touch the radio, and my, my mother, anybody knows my mother, she's a, she's a tough cookie. And she hit me, bah! And she said, uh, did you pay for this car? I said, no. Nah. She said, don't touch my radio. So I would listen to Tony on the way to school, and it was subliminally getting to me one way or another. One thing is for your mother to tell you something, but one thing is when it's reassured and reconfirmed by somebody else. And he had a, a, a story on the table about um, Colonel Sanders and Kentucky Fried Chicken. And then he ran into a thousand and some changed no's. I'm thinking, damn, it's hard for me to hear one no. Imagine a thousand no's. I'm like, man, if he could take on a thousand no's, create Kentucky Fried Chicken, and I like this chicken, <laughs> I think this guy's on to something. <laughs> and that's how it worked out. So throughout the years, I started to apply um, the philosophy and then creating my own way of looking at things where I created slogans such as, there's no losing, only learning. There's no failure, only opportunities. And there's no problems, only solutions. It all depends on how you want to look at it. Have a hand for that. That's yeah. awesome. Thank you. I appreciate it. So next thing I know, I'm running into Tony. We start uh, trading messages through certain people that put us together. So I go from the kid in Miami, Cuban kid, light skin, blue eyes, ends up in the rap game. <laughs> I don't know how about that happened, but I don't want <laughs> Okay? Ends up in the rap game, one of my mentors in the business is Little John, happened to be a boy at the ATL. Yeah. And Luther Campbell, because I said, if I want to be anything in Miami, mind you, everybody was telling me not to sign with Luke, because Two Lot Crew wasn't cool at the time, and this was in the late 90s. I said, well, I want to be anything in Miami, I got to deal with the king of Miami. So fast forward, I end up getting the Hollywood star, and Little John's there, Luke is there, and Tony's there. It goes to show you, it comes full circle. <laughs> so the only reason I come out and have these conversations is because at least through music in my journey, you guys can see that it's tangible, it's something that's for real. We don't talk about it, we be about it. When you really apply it, it comes to life. Because sometimes it can become almost a lecture instead of something motivation. Oh, I get it, I know what he's going to say. You should listen to life, you should look at it this way, you should look at it no, no, no. I'm here to tell you, I've applied it, pivoted in my life. It's nothing crazy. It's a tweak. It's, it's things that you just, well, I mean, story of my life when it comes to records. I'm not the most talented one, but goddamn, I can remix the shit out of a record and make it song else. <laughs> and that's what I say. You know, the music business, I always tell everybody, it's 90% business, 10% talent. Yeah. And usually the ones that get caught up on the talent side, I wish I could say everything in Spanish and English and kind of make it make sense, but in Spanish, talento. No, what about, what about, what about? Talento is talent. But if you also flip it, talento means really slow. So it all depends on how you utilize the word talent in Spanish. And I tell people all the time, when it comes to the music business, that's exactly what it is. A lot of people get caught up in the fact that they want to be so talented that the business uses them. Instead of utilizing the business, they just become another number, another statistic, and another, what do they call it, one-hit wonders, let's just say. 
And so we try not to believe in a business. Most people, even in their own businesses, like look, their business takes them over instead of them running their business. It's the same exact thing in any business. It's really true. A lot of business owners in this room. Tell me, what's been one of your most proudest accomplishments in your career so far? And then maybe mention if you would, because you've become an entrepreneur yourself, and you also are philanthropist on a major scale. It's one of the reasons we're dear friends, is I respect and love you so much, not only for your business ability and your talent and your pop, but you are always giving back. I was just at your concert in Miami, and you're so beloved there because you've never forgotten your roots. Tell us a little bit about what's been one of your proudest moments, accomplishments, and what do you do in, that gives you juice outside of what you do here as a singer, as a pop star, as a rapper? Well, for one, thank you. I love your back. Um, I use Cubans. We live our life by little slogans, so you get life quick through a couple lines. In English, they, they say, "If you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything." Yes. Okay. If you don't know where you're from, you don't know where you're going. So it's little quotes that really switch my mind. I don't try to complicate things. Simplicity is the key to success. And spe speaking of success, and what I was talking about before was. I took the word success and started playing with it. Because first you succeed, you succeed is making it. Success is how you maintain it, and then successful is when you understand what it is to be, to succeed and success. But in each part of the journey, notice in the, in the word is suck. <laughs> suck, see, suck, success, suck, successful. And when you get to success, you're giving people access to suck in excess. It's real shit. Think about it. <laughs> yeah. And you got to be able to deal with those kind of things. A lot of people don't know how to get there, and that's where their business ends up running them, let's just yeah. say. So for me, proudest moments in my career, I was at iHeartRadio Awards in Miami, and they gave me an award, and I would say my kids can't eat awards, which is just the truth. All right. I appreciate them, but not even the pawn shop's gonna take it. So, just like when they gave me the key to the city of Miami, I'm like, what the fuck is this shit really open? <laughs> <laughs> Am I gonna get, you know, a tax break or something? Or... I appreciate it, I really do. But when I get this award, it was an award from kids that we were graduating in SLAM, a charter school that we opened in Miami, in one of my old neighborhoods in Little Havana. And that meant the world to me. And when I hit that stage, I got hit with such a high, I didn't even know what was going on with me. That you speak from such a place, that it's, it's passion that's in there, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a hunger, it's a drive, it's a struggle that you let out. And it was my way of protecting these kids that everybody writes off, nobody believes in. I was one of them. I was on tour before I went on a, on a, on a tour musically. I was on tour, uh, I went to 25 schools throughout my life different neighborhoods, different cities, different states. So to be able to be up there representing these kids that stand for everything that I know, that I believe in and they relate because we have the same struggle, meant the world to me. To be able to be on that stage with them and accept that award for them. Thank you. And in that same concert that you went to, which was an honor to have Tony there jamming, having a great time, I had two kids that graduated, and that was my promise to them. I said, look, if you guys graduate and you stick to the books, I'll allow you to come on stage and dance at one of our concerts, which are the great dancers that came out in the middle of the yeah. show and started doing their thing. One of them happens to be one of the top break dancers in the world right now, as we speak. So to be able to see them go up there and start to live their dream, because I always say, why dream when you can live it? Just wake up. <laughs> really that simple. <laughs> really is. Those are very, very, very proud moments for me. And the SLAM school that he has, and there's a series of them now being yes. created, is sports, leadership, and management, and they teach in a totally different way. If you saw the school in the middle of Blue Havana, there's been an area that's been blighted that he built with his partners, it will blow you away. I, I, was, I was like, I would have loved them to the school. It's pretty extraordinary. Tell us, we wrap up before you perform, what are two or three tips that you would give people that could help them accelerate their success? You talked about a lot of things, but what are a couple of things that might take it to another level for somebody? And, and maybe also, just from a practical perspective, one of the things that helped you go international was you rode a horse really well, which is, and I didn't know this, I was at your concert the other night, you mentioned it, you never told me this before, but you've been, you got in the first Fast and Furious, and you've been in every one, is that true? 
So tell yes. me a little bit about what are some of the tools that can help something accelerate, and maybe tell us what, what role did that have in spreading music around the world as well? Well, for one, I always tell people, patience, passion, and perseverance equals success, okay? We live in a society that is not now, it's right now. It's instant gratification, okay? It doesn't exist, guys. It does not exist. When I was around boys selling dope in the neighborhood, they always had something. They would say, dope money comes quickly, it's quicker. That's the society we're living in right now. You want to live for a slow or for show, something that's going to, it's a marathon, not a sprint, let's just say. Yeah. My number one advice to everybody here right now, because I see everybody on it, cut out the noise. And what I mean by the noise is, that phone can be a lot of noise in your life. It could be a lot of noise in your life. You got to know how to access the access. There's like almost too much information that it doesn't allow you to really focus on what you want to do in your life. Yeah. And I, I, I tell people all the time, we take so many pictures now, we miss the big picture. We're so connected, we're disconnected. Yeah. We want everything so flat and so fast that we're the ones becoming slow. Yeah. Slower mentally, slower physically, slower emotionally, slower spiritually. And what you really got to figure out is, what do you want out of this journey? And that's really, I always tell people when, I, when I, I do business with them, I say, look, it's not about the money, it's about the journey. Because yeah. there's nothing better when you're doing business, nobody believes in it. You can't, you won't, you will, never have to happen, it's going to fail, horrible idea. Then it becomes that you're the most genius thing that did it, successful at it. And what better than to trade a story with a partner like that? Do you remember when nobody would believe in you? Do you remember when this happened? Yeah. There's no money that can buy that. There's no price on them kind of stories. So that's what I live for. I live to be an underdog. I live to get knocked down. I live to fail. I live to trip. I live to fall. I live to slip. So, thank you. We're all in a living world where we're drowning in information and we're starving for wisdom. Right? And you know, we live in a place where so many people, every person I know, and I, just, I know it's true for you too, we've talked about this before, who is incredibly successful, their greatest joy is always talking about the shit times, <laughs> right? Because it's like, it makes you appreciate it. Because if everything you wanted, you just got instantly, you'd be bored out of your mind. It's the challenge, it's overcoming it, and it's the people that we get to interact with that make our life fulfilling, and it's where the memories come from. Final question, what's next for Pitbull? You've conquered the planet in your area. I mean, I know this is only the beginning for you, brother, but tell me, what's the next level? What's the next thing you're focused on? Where are you going now? Well, you guys seen the goals. I've been putting out the goals since 09 publicly. And I look forward to, we have a lot of things going on right now. Uh, I'm on tour right now with Enrique Iglesias. He's always giving us amazing opportunities. He's a great partner. We have a sold out tour all around the States. I have a Vegas residency. And, coming up now in July, the second leg of the tour in the United States, then we're gonna hit the whole world. And we're building things, creating an, an, an immense portfolio, but to me the most important thing is, is what we can do with education. Yes. And, and I'm, uh, <laughs> I hope there's a bunch of teachers out there, and administrators, <laughs> principals, and I'm gonna tell you why. My mother told me there's nobody stupid and nobody dumb in life. It's all about, you gotta figure out how you learn. Me personally, I can read the shit out of a page for you. I get to the third page and then I go, what the fuck did I just read on the first page? Okay? But I figured out that wasn't my strong suit. I'm a good learner by listening, watching, and hands on. And that's what I've applied in my life. So what I wanted to do was create that for the kids. Because if you can create a mind, I always say this, is if you teach it to believe in itself, mold it when it's a sponge, and teach it that life is gonna, it's gonna come at you swinging. It's not going to be like mom, dad, the uh, your aunt, your grandmother, and always want the best for you. Nah, it's going to knock you on your ass and stand right over you like Muhammad Ali did and say, all right, now get back up if you want to because I got another one better for you. When you can get back up and say, I love to get here. Keep them coming, keep them coming. Well, then guess what? Now life starts to look different. Now it's a sport. Now it's fun. Now it's a hobby. Yeah. And that's what I'm trying to teach these kids. Because when they're about to get dealt, I want them to be able to make educated decisions, especially when we see everything going on in this world right now. We're living in a world that you're getting fed a lot of false information. And you gotta be smart enough to just ask that extra question of going, is that the truth? Is that, is that what really happened? And, and a lot of that, well, I think it's the best philosophy I can use right now is the tail wagging the dog. Yeah. And everybody's looking at the tail right now and not even understanding how this dog can bite him in the ass 
right now. All around the world, and me traveling the world, I've gotten a chance to see how people manipulate news, not only through, uh, through media, but also through your phones and everything that you look up. So how are you gonna make a decision if you're not educated and know which way to move? No. Yeah. So it becomes cattle walking into a slaughterhouse, basically. Yeah, if you're not a critical if thinker, you're, if you're, not a a critical. Order, and you're gonna get slaughtered. And, and to be a critical thinker is everything you wanna apply and anything that you wanna do in life, bottom line. In business, you wanna get better at business? Okay then, be critical, think to a level of where you enjoy that journey. Don't let it outthink you like you were saying before. Yes. Because then it's not worth it. There's no money in the world that's worth that. I, I've told Tony this before. I wouldn't want to be involved with a billion dollar business to have a trillion dollar headache. You can keep that shit. Yes. I'd rather be happy. <laughs> By the way, that's what we've all talked about. Today. It's so cool. Brother, thank you for sharing. My I pleasure. love you behind the pit bull. This beautiful soul that we all love. <laughs> Thank you so much.